Hey boys and girls, it's Mr. Tom. How are you doing? It's nice to see you. I'm glad you're with me to read another book. Well, today we've got a special book. This book is called A Chair for My Mother by Vera Williams. It's an interesting story about uh, a family, a mom, a daughter, and a grandmom who lived in an apartment in the city. Something bad happened. They had a fire in their apartment and they had to move out and move someplace else. But what they were missing in their new apartment, in their new home, was a comfortable chair. At the end of a long day, you need a comfortable chair to sit in. So this story tells the story of how the mom, the grandmother, and the daughter fixed that situation. So let's get started. It's called A Chair for My Mother. My mother works as a waitress in the blue tiled diner. After school sometimes I go to meet her there. Then her boss Josephine gives me a job too. I wash all the salts and peppers and I fill the ketchups. One time I peeled all the onions for the onion soup. When I finish Josephine says, good work honey, and she pays me. And every time I put half of my money that I get into the jar. The jar? What jar? Oh, that jar. It takes a long time to fill a jar this big. Every day when my mother comes home from work, I take down the jar. My mama empties all her change from tips out of her purse for me to count. And then we push all the coins into the jar. Sometimes my mama is laughing when she comes home from work. Sometimes she's so tired she falls asleep while I count the money out into piles. Some days she has lots of tips. Some days she holds, has only a little, and then she looks worried. But each evening, every single shiny coin goes into this jar. We sit in the kitchen to count the tips. Usually grandma sits with us too. That's grandma, that's mom, and that's the little girl. While we count, grandma likes to hum. She often has money in her old leather wallet for us. Whenever she gets a good bargain on tomatoes or bananas or something she buys, she passes on the savings to us and they go into the jar. When we can't get a single more coin into the jar, we are going to take out all the money and we're going to go and buy a chair. Yes, a chair. A wonderful, beautiful, fat, soft armchair. Just like that. We will get one covered in velvet with roses all over it. We're going to get the best chair in the whole world. That's because our old chairs burned up. There was a big fire in our other house and all our chairs burned. So did our sofa and so did everything else. It wasn't such a long time ago. My mother and I were coming home from buying new shoes. I had new sandals. And mom, she had new pumps. We were walking to our house from the bus. We were looking at everyone's tulips. And she was saying she liked the red tulips. And I was saying I liked the yellow ones. And then we came to our block. Right outside our house stood two big fire engines. I could see lots of smoke. Tall orange flames came out of the roof. All the neighbors stood in a bunch across the street. Mama grabbed my hand and we ran. My Uncle Sandy saw us and ran to us and Mama yelled, Where's Mother? I yelled, Where's my Grandma? My Aunt Ida waved and shouted, She's here, she's here, she's okay, don't worry. Grandma was alright. Our cat was safe too, although it took a while to find her. But everything else in our whole house was spoiled. That's what it looked like. Black and burnt, charred, ruined, no good. What was left of the house was turned to charcoal and ashes. We went to stay with my mother's sister, Aunt Ida, and Uncle Sandy. And then we were able to move into the apartment downstairs. We painted the walls yellow. The floors were all shiny, but the rooms were very empty. See, all their things burned up when they had the fire in their house. They didn't have anything to replace it with. Well, the first day we moved in, the neighbors brought pizza and cake and ice cream. 
and they brought a lot of other things too. The family across the street brought a table and three kitchen chairs. The very old man next door gave us a bed from when his children were little. My other grandpa brought us this beautiful rug. My mother's other sister, Sally, well, she had made us red and white curtains for the windows. Mama's boss, Josephine, brought pots and pans, silverware and dishes. My cousin brought me her own stuffed bear. Wow, that was nice of everyone to bring all that stuff. Everyone clapped when my grandma made a speech. She said, you are all the kindest people. And we thank you very, very much. It's lucky that we're young and we can start over. I'm going to show you close up some of the things that all the people brought. Those are some of the things that people brought for them because they had a fire and they lost all their possessions. People are very nice at times, right? They were really being helpful. They were being bucket fillers. Big time bucket fillers. Well, that was last year. But we still have no sofa and no big chairs. When Mama comes home, her feet hurt. She's walking around all day being a waitress. There's no good place for me to take a load off my feet, she says. When Grandma wants to sit back and hum and cut up potatoes, she has to get comfortable as she can on a hard kitchen chair. So that is how come Mama brought home the biggest jar she could find at the diner and all the coins started to go into that jar. But now the jar is too heavy for me to lift down. Uncle Sandy gave me a quarter and he had to boost me up so I could put it in. Boys and girls, is that jar full? Looks pretty full to me. I bet it's very heavy. Well, that looks like a lot of money. You know, you don't think of coins as being a lot of money, but... When there's that many of them, that's a lot. Well, after supper, Mom and Grandma and I stood in front of the jar. Well, I never would have believed it, but I guess it's full, Mama said. My mother brought home little paper wrappers for the nickels and dimes and the quarters. And I counted them all out and I wrapped them up. On my mother's day off, we took all the coins to the bank. The bank exchanged them for $10 bills, and then we took the bus downtown to shop for our chair. We shopped through four furniture stores. We tried out big chairs and smaller ones, high chairs and low chairs, soft chairs and harder ones. Grandma said she felt like Goldilocks and the Three Bears trying out all those chairs. Remember that book? When Goldilocks came in and sat in a big chair medium chair and a small chair and then she rocked and rocked and rocked and it broke. Finally, we found the chair we were all dreaming of. And the money in the jar was just enough to pay for it. We called Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy and they came right down in the pickup truck to drive the chair home for us. They knew we couldn't wait for it to be delivered. Wow, look at that chair and the little girl's actually sitting in it. She's in the back of a pickup truck. You think they're gonna drive to, to their apartment like that? I tried out our chair in the back of the truck. Mama wouldn't let me sit there while we drove. But they let me sit in it while they carried it up the door. We sat the chair right beside the window with the red and white curtains. Grandma and Mama and I all sat in it a while and and Ida took our picture. Now Grandma sits in it and talks with people going by in the daytime. Mama sits down and watches the news on TV And when she comes home from her job. And after supper I sit with her and she can reach right up and turn out the light if I fall asleep in her lap. That's it. That's the picture there of all three of them in the chair. Pretty big chair. It looks comfortable. It looks soft and smushy. Well, this is a cool book. A Chair for My Mother by Vera Williams. So to recap, they had a fire at their house. The fire destroyed everything inside. And they got a few things from, from the neighbors and from friends. And that was great. They were bucket fillers. They helped. But what they really wanted was a soft, smushy chair to just rest and get comfortable in. 
and that's what they were missing. So they saved up the money from tips, and the little girl saved up the money from when she would help at the diner. And they eventually filled up that jar. So, you know, actually I thought it would be kind of cool if we tried something similar. So what is this, boys and girls? It looks like a Greek yogurt container, plastic container you might have in your house or something similar, but it's not. What is it? What's that sticking out of it? Well, that's a little bit of money. We, in another video, we're going to make, we're going to show you how to make one of these out of things that you have or at your house. And boys and girls, you will be able to make your own little piggy bank. We call them piggy banks because they always used to be shaped in the shape of a pig and they would have this slot inside and you could put money in. Well, back then, the only way you could get the money out of the bank was to break it. I never liked that. But this one is pretty easy to get into. You just take the top off. But the idea is to leave it in there. So you make this slot, you put your money in, and you don't take it out until you have enough saved up to get what you want. We'll talk about this in another video. But for now, that's it. That was our book, A Chair for My Mother. Thanks for watching with me, boys and girls. Bye-bye.